Hey guys, me again, George here. And uh, basically, I'm gonna show you all the way I got this hooked up. All this is temporary, and it's just for demonstration purposes. So I got my 40 watt panel here. And I got this cable coming from my solar panels from the back, from the junction box, excuse me. And it's running to this charge controller I have here. I'm not sure of the the amperage on it. I think it's a it's a 12 volt, 12 amp uh, charge controller. And um, I got this cable here that goes to my watt meter. You know, some of you guys don't have watt meters or anything like that. So if you don't have one of these, your leads will go directly to your power and ground on your battery. So, so for my solar panel, it goes down the cable to my charge controller. For my charge controller, it goes to my battery. Now, if you have an inverter, you always want to have a fuse in line. You know, the manufacturer of your inverter is going to tell you what size of fuse to use. You never want to. You never want to use. A really really big fuse because if you have a short or something happens a lot of stuff is gonna get fried so you know just a, a heads up be careful and um, there's a lot of amperage a lot of voltage depending on on what side you're on if you're on the other side of the inverter or if you're at the DC side the 12 24 36 volt area or your solar panel you know if you have an MPPT charge controller most likely you're gonna have 50 60 volts inputting on there so I would recommend for you to cover your solar panel and then come back over here hook up your charge controller your battery you know once all this is set up you know go ahead and hook up your your inverter and you know test out everything make sure everything's working properly and go from there anyway solar is a it's a real nice hobby of mine I work with it pretty often and you know something I liked since I was a little kid you know electricity and solar and you know all this kind of stuff so we got 37 and a half watts coming in you know 39.7 was my peak wattage I got 22 and a half watt hours saved on my battery so some of you may be wondering what watt hours are and you know if I have 100 watt hours on there, that means that I should be able to use 100 watts in an hour. And that's basically the power that I saved up. So if you have 100 watt hours on there and you're going to use an LED light that's 20 watts, you have enough power for five, five hours. So these are pretty neat devices. I think I got it from hobbyking.com, uh, which is a... Uh, it's a watt meter used on RC cars, helicopters, and you know it's it's out there for you to determine what size battery or what motor benefits you the most. I used it for my solar project, and um, compared it with my Fluke, and out of two of them, one was really dead on with my Fluke. The other one, I don't know if you can adjust it or not, but you know it works pretty good for me. So like I said, I got, got my battery cables there. As you can see, I put black tape on one of them so I can know which one's my ground. And um, once again, you always want to have an inline fuse, you know, whether it's a, an AGU fuse, a Maxi, or a &L. You know, just have something with a proper rating, you should be good. All right, guys, that's it for this video.